Alice in Wonderland Syndrome. You're walking through your apartment when suddenly your legs feel six feet longer. The ceiling is a mile high. The hallway looks like it might not end. You blink, shake your head, try to recalibrate. Everything's warped, but stable. It feels like someone swapped your normal apartment for a dream sequence. This is Alice in Wonderland Syndrome. And no, it's not a metaphor. It's a legit neurological condition where your brain's spatial perception goes full Lewis Carroll. Objects shrink, distances stretch, your own limbs might feel like they belong to someone else or to a video game avatar running with maxed out field of view. It's not a hallucination. Everything is where it is. But your brain's internal measuring tape? Absolutely borked. Usually tied to migraine seizures or sometimes just weird sleep cycles, it's like reality turns elastic for a few terrifying, fascinating minutes. You're fully aware, but it doesn't make it feel any less glitchy. You just have to wait for the system to reboot. Lexical gustatory synesthesia. Someone says the word calendar, you instantly taste scrambled eggs. They say Wednesday. Boom. Coconut. Your brain's playing a flavor-based word game, and you're not in control. This isn't some quirky association game. This is lexical gustatory synesthesia, where your brain cross-wires language with flavor. You don't imagine the taste, you actually experience it. The words trigger involuntary taste sensations. For some people, names are spicy, numbers are sour, abstract nouns taste like burnt toast. The condition is ultra-rare but very real. It can be delightful, distracting, or just completely chaotic. And while it might sound like a novelty, imagine trying to have a serious meeting while randomly tasting anchovies, paper clips, or mango yogurt every time someone talks. It's not flavor you can escape. It's baked into your vocabulary. Visual snow. You wake up, open your eyes, and everything looks fuzzy. Not blurry, not out of focus, just covered in static. Like the world has a layer of television snow on it. No matter where you look, the grainy film follows. Welcome to visual snow syndrome, where your brain overlays a constant layer of visual noise over your perception of reality. Like your retina is broadcasting on the wrong channel. It's not painful. It's just disorienting. It doesn't go away when you blink, or when you look at a wall, or when you close your eyes. It's there, all the time, like the universe forgot to anti-alias itself. Researchers still don't fully understand what causes it, but it's thought to be a neurological sensory processing issue. Your brain trying to show you the world but turning the contrast up to 11. You're awake, but you're watching a constant static overlay. Add in bright lights, headaches, and visual distractions, and you've got a 24-7 visual filter no one asked for. It's like your brain put reality in lo-fi mode, and and then lost the remote. Foreign accent syndrome. You wake up, say good morning, and the voice that comes out isn't yours. It has an accent. Maybe British, maybe French, maybe indecipherable. The weirdest part? You can't turn it off. This is foreign accent syndrome, one of the rarest and most bizarre brain glitches ever recorded. Usually following a brain injury or stroke, the language centers in your brain reboot with the dials twisted. Your mouth moves the same, but your rhythm, tone, and pronunciation get completely remapped. It's not faked, not imagined, and not controllable. It can be permanent. Imagine Imagine the identity crisis of speaking in a voice that feels not you, like someone else has taken over your vocal cords. And no, Duolingo had nothing to do with it. It's your voice, just recompiled in a new dialect patch. Some people adapt, others feel like they lost part of their identity to a glitch they can't reverse. Over time, the accent might shift again, or never go away. You're not performing, you're debugging. Tetris Effect You spent the day playing Tetris, or Candy Crush, or organizing books, or driving cross-country. Then you close your eyes to sleep, and it's still happening. The blocks keep falling, the road keeps stretching, the matching tiles keep swapping themselves. Even your dreams are in level design mode. This is the Tetris effect. When your brain gets so looped into a repetitive task that it continues simulating it long after you've stopped. It's like your brain goes, cool pattern, let's rehearse it forever. It's most noticeable after long sustained sessions of a visual or physical task, games, routines, even manual labor. Your mind just keeps playing without you. The effect is harmless but disorienting, like muscle memory, but visual. Sometimes it helps you master a task. Other times it just invades your sleep like a screensaver you can't disable. Your brain, always optimizing, starts doing the task better in your head than you ever did in real life. It doesn't want to stop, and you can't convince it to. Earworms. It started as a casual listen. Just a snippet, a jingle, a chorus, a three-second clip of a song you barely like. Now it's looped 312 times in your head. Congratulations, you have an earworm. Your brain's auditory loop got hijacked by an involuntary melody, usually catchy, sometimes annoying, always impossible to delete. 
The worst part? Trying not to think about it only makes it worse. It's like mental quicksand. The more you struggle, the deeper it burrows. Some researchers think it's your brain attempting to resolve unfinished patterns. Others say it's just poor impulse control. Either way, enjoy the soundtrack. It might last hours or days. Some people report loops that return months later like cursed MP3s stored in their soul. Music you didn't ask for but can't skip. And the more you try to override it with another song, the more your brain becomes a cursed shuffle loop. Mandela Effect You remember it clearly. The Monopoly Man had a monocle. Darth Vader said, Luke, I am your father. It was was definitely Berenstein Bears. Except, none of that is true. That's the Mandela Effect, a shared false memory experienced by groups of people. It's not just you. Entire communities vividly remember things that never happened. It's named after people misremembering the date of Nelson Mandela's death. But now it's a whole genre of reality slippage. Your memory isn't a hard drive. It's a messy, editable Google Doc that everyone can type in at once. And sometimes the edits go viral. Maybe your brain conflated details. Maybe pop culture reinforced it. Or maybe we did glitch into the wrong universe at some point and we're all just rolling with it. Either way, it raises the question, how much of your memory is true, and how much is just consensus hallucination? Semantic satiation. Say apple, now say it again. Again, 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 apple, apple, apple. What is an apple? That's semantic satiation. When repeating a word causes it to lose all meaning. Your brain short circuits the sound to meaning connection and you're left with a pile of alien phonemes. It's like language is a video file and you kept scrubbing back and forth until it glitched. The word melts. Not literally, but psychologically. It's the audio version of staring at a painting until it turns into blobs. Language has to feel automatic. When you interrupt that rhythm with repetition, the brain just tosses the whole concept out the window. Congrats! You broke a word. You can fix it, but it takes time. Let your brain recompile its language drivers. Until then, apples are just noise. The fictive loop. You finish a book and mourn a character like they were your childhood dog. You get genuinely angry at a villain who never existed. You cry about a dragon who died in a CGI explosion. This is the fictive loop. When fictional experiences trigger real, lasting emotions, your brain doesn't care whether it was a movie, a novel, or a fever dream. If it felt real, it gets logged like it was real. Neurologically, emotions don't distinguish between fact and fiction. You're literally grieving someone who never lived. And that heartbreak? 100% real. Stories are simulations for emotion. They train us for situations we may never experience. And that includes pain, loss, and growth over things that were made up. Fiction hits like fact because your brain doesn't see the border. And the more immersive the story, the stronger the imprint. You walk away changed not by what happened, but by what your brain believed happened. Derealization. The room looks normal, the lights are on, the colors are real, but somehow everything feels fake, like a movie set, like a simulation, like you're watching your own life from behind a glass wall. This is derealization, a dissociative glitch where your emotional connection to the world temporarily vanishes. People feel robotic, voices sound far away, time stretches and warps. Nothing feels wrong, but nothing feels real. It's usually triggered by stress, panic attacks, or trauma. And while it can feel existentially terrifying, it's not dangerous, just disorienting. Like reality is buffering. It passes, but in the moment, you feel disconnected from everything. You know you're alive, but you don't feel like you're in it, like you're just watching through someone else's eyes. And no matter how hard you try, you can't emotionally plug back in. It's like being homesick for your own existence. If you found this video helpful or engaging, a like and subscribe is appreciated. Also comment if you want a part two.